Hello everybody, welcome to the Drunk Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, Sophia. Welcome to the show. How's everyone doing? Yes, I'm a popsicle. It is hot. It's not even that hot. I'm just hot. Okay. Um, but welcome to the show. Look at Sassy Kitty made a comeback. Hey, Sassy Kitty. Before I get started, I just want to remind y'all that I do have merch. What? And don't forget, you can support the show on page. I just spit everywhere. You can support the show on Patreon and also check out my latest pattern uh, called Touch of Joy Shawl. Don't forget, we are knitting this together this month. Um, I think 50% of the proceeds for my Touch of Joy Shawl goes to the share organization, which does help uh, families navigate through infant and baby loss. So please check that out. I'm going to link that below as well. So yeah, check all those things out. Now let's get with the show. Let me put my popsicle. I have no order. Let's get started. Okay. <laughs> Muscle top. Today we're going to talk about socks. Okay. I love knitting socks. I have been knitting socks for a couple of years now. It is my pride and joy with knitting. I'm hot. But it's cute. But does it match my, my 1985 couch print romper? No, it does not. But it's cute. Anyway, I've been knitting socks for a minute, okay? And I, it's like one of my favorite things to knit because it's such a small project. It's like one of those gifts that you can give, you know? And like, everyone will love them, you know? They're so warm, they're so cozy. Hand knitted socks are great. They're temperature controlled. You don't sweat in them, believe it or not. Like, it's not like cotton socks where you can get really cold and sweat in them, you know? like. Wool socks are like the best. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk about how I knit my wool socks. I knit my socks the easiest way possible. I do have a couple classes on those. I'll link those below. But today I'm gonna talk about a method that I haven't taught yet in those classes. Is this just gonna be a quick rundown? I'm gonna include some videos of people. I'm gonna talk about techniques, and then I'm gonna include those videos of those techniques below. So that way you can follow along at home. So let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to show you what my socks look like. Um, these are both the same sock template. They just look different because one is just decorative. It has like a little decorative motif. And one I just went with plain stockinette. And I just used self-striping sock yarn by Sassy Kitty. Um, now... What well, about these socks is that the way I make them, they're just one long cylinder. There is no added stitches here for instep, okay? The heel is knitted in at the same time. It's all done in one piece, and I start from the toe down. So there's no grafting, no kitchener stitch. You gotta do nothing. You're just literally knitting in the round. Complete a couple of short rows that are easy peasy lemon squeezy. I usually do my heels in like an afternoon, not even like, I do my heels like over like a short movie and it's done, you know? Um, and then the leg and that's it. And the beauty about socks, but knitting socks is that it's pretty mindless. You don't need a pattern. You don't even need to like wind your yarn half the times. I love to buy my yarn and, and, and skeins, is it skeins? Again, skate. I don't, my yarn looks like this. <laughs> Usually I just take it and I go with my favorite pair of sock needles and I am done. Bye, see ya. And that's pretty much how I knit my socks. No pattern, nothing. So let me show you. I talked a lot. Let me show you. So first I start with the toe and I start with something called Judy's Magic Cast On. I have a disembodied sock toe somewhere. Here it is. Meet my disembodied sock toe of shame. Um, so I actually start from here, and as you can see, it's literally a completed toe. Yes, that's how my stitches look when I cast on. I have not uh, sewed them together. I've not grafted them together. I haven't done any crazy short rows. All I did was a cast on called Judy's Magic Cast On, and the cast on literally starts in the round, and the stitches are closed and connected just like that. I'm going to show you how it's done. Well, no, I'm not going to show you. I'm going to link a video below that so you can see it in action. But that's how I start my socks. And I usually only cast on about an inch to an inch and a half of stitches. It's not precise. So with sock yarn, and I usually use size zero long circular needles because I do knit my socks two at a time. 
Um, in case you're wondering what that looks like, I do have that here because I knit socks a lot. It's just here. This is what they look like. What my disembodied toes would look like. Oh, that one's inside out. Um, still on the sock needles. And so on finger and wet yarn with size zero needles, okay, I usually cast on like, I don't know, 16 stitches for the socks. I don't even count. If it looks like an inch, it smells like an inch. Oh, I must drop something. It's an inch. I cast on that. And then from there, I just increase the toe. And so when you increase for toe stitches the way I like to do it, um, as you can see, this toe looks sharper than this toe. I have two different ways of doing it. The sharp toe is my least favorite. I find that it's it doesn't fit as well, but it's the more traditional way to do it. And then the round toe doesn't look as nice as the sharp toe, aka I think this is also called a star toe. Um, I, I just call it sharp because it looks like a trapezoid, like ba bam And then this one's very round. Um, this is least traditional, but I find that it fits best. And these are essentially the same technique the only difference is that when you increase, because with socks, you increase right here and right here, and then when you go around in your circle, you increase again the other side, right here and right here, so you're increasing four stitches. The only difference is between this uh, sharp toe and this uh, round toe is that I increase every other round with this one, and then I increase every round with this one. So it's really up to you. I prefer the round toe for gifts because I find it just has a better fit, but I do love the classic look of the star toe. All right, so I increase my toes until they fit snugly around my feet. I wish I can show you what that can look like. Um, I don't know if I could reach my foot in the air, but <laughs> I can't do it anymore. Okay, but it's gonna fit snugly around your toes. And I like my socks to be super duper tight while I'm knitting them. Uh, but a lot of people like them loose. So it's really, if it fits to your liking, it's probably good. That's the beauty of toe up. You just gotta fit it to your liking. It's gorgeous. It's so simple. And um, with these, I always like to try them on, and then if I can't try them on, like that's for like uh, uh, someone else, I tend to have them try it on, and when I reach the toe increases, just so that way it fits them perfectly. And remember, I like them snug, and a reason why I like them to fit snug is because if you're using wool, like I usually use wool for socks, specifically superwash, it will grow in the wash and it will also grow as you wear them. And so I tend to like knit pretty small socks for my feet. I wear a size seven in everything. And um, let's see, I think I, on size zero, double zero needles, I think I do around like 54 stitches, 54 or 56 stitches, depending on, the yarn for the entire circumference of the sock. So that's just a gauge. The average sock for adults is usually like 60 stitches in one sock. I tend to drop that down to 54 to 56. Sometimes even less than that, depending on how big my sock needles are that day. Um, so FYI, you could aim for 60 and be safe for most adult sizes if you're using size zero or size double zero sock needles. Um, and so you just increase to your to your magic number. Mine's 56. Yours might be 60. You might not have uh, children feet. <laughs> and then from there, you just knit into a silk. You just knit all the way around until you reach your heel. And again, I just try them on. And then when I reach to where my heel is, literally to like the edge of my foot, like. I sh professionally, I should show you a diagram, but I'm lazy, so I'm gonna show you my feet. So I literally knit up to here, okay? And, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's like yoga. That prenatal yoga is coming through. So, <laughs> I forgot. My popsicle froze in my water. It actually tastes really good. So anyway, you knit up to your heel and then I like to start my heel. Now my favorite heels are the Flegel heels. Um, 
which I'm going to link Flegel, like that's her name. That's her like internet name. I'm going to link her method below. She has a blog post on it. It's fabulous. Or the afterthought heel, which I'm going to link that below too. A link like a blog post about it or something. Those are great. But the flegal heel only works if you have an instep. So because I am not increasing or decreasing stitches, I'm literally just knitting a cylinder. Like I am just knitting all the way up, not adding nothing. Uh, so the flegal heel, they, they want you to add insteps because that can create a better fit for certain adults. For me, it, it depends. I have to be really careful with my instep because I do have baby feet. But... So the flagel heel doesn't really work for the method that I like to do. Um, if you want to add in steps in the flagel heel, heel, I do have a class on that link below. But for this, for what? Eh, but for this method, what I do, this is the quickest way to do it, in my opinion. Um, you might not get the perfect fit for every foot shape just because you're not adding in steps. But a lot of sack knitters do not add the instep. Instead, what they might do, if they know someone has a wider instep, if you don't know what that is, the instep is kind of like right here, okay? Sock Anatomy 101, welcome to class. <laughs> the instep is right here. And if you look at your actual foot, I can't pick mine up anymore because I might like stretch something. But if you look at the, your actual foot, it kind of gets wider there. Um, from, from here to here, it gets a bit wider. And so that's the thought behind those instep stitches that you may start increasing on just on the bottom part of your foot, like where the heel is right here. Um, now to combat that with this method, some people prefer to add a little wiggle room in the cast, um, in the stitches that, in your toe stitches. So when you increase your toe stitches, no high said like mine snug. So I stop at 56. Well, the next person might like theirs at 60 with a little more wiggle room. You get what I mean? So that way when they get to their, if they got bigger instep, that will compensate for that and they will have enough room there. And uh, so that's how the, a lot of people do that. I almost never do that. Um, my husband has a wide instep, so I, I still give him his instep. He needs it. But the average adult will be perfectly fine with just adding a little bit of wiggle room. I just don't need it. Um, a lot of the women in my family don't need it. It's all about how your foot is shaped and what you prefer as the glorious sock wearer. So I don't use the flagel heel. I don't use the afterthought heel usually. I use a simple um, short row heel that I'm going to link below. It's not mine. I'm going to admit it's not my favorite heel because when you look at it, okay, it's not really that pretty. A lot of people like the fish kit, fish lips kiss heel. Um, I haven't really looked into that just because I'm not sure if you need instep stitches or not. I might look into it next time I knit a sock, but this is just a basic um, short row heel. I literally just added stitches and then to the point, no, I literally just decrease stitches and then add them back in and that's it. And I'm going to link that below. It's very simple. And then once you get past the heel, which is probably the most challenging part of knitting a sock, just because it's not just straight stockinette, you know, like you, you might have to count a little bit, not a lot of it, just a little bit. And then once you get past that, you have the, you're back to your original amount of stitches that you started with. So for me, my number was 56. Uh, then I just knit the leg until I don't feel like knitting the sock anymore. And then I do ribbing. And then I end with uh, a sewn bind off which is my favorite bind off ever because when you look at the sewn bind off it looks like there's nothing there like it looks like the knitting just ended on its own it's very clean and it's very stretchy but it's not too stretchy where the sock falls off it's honestly the sewn bind off it's by Elizabeth Zimmerman is the best bind off ever and it's so fast. I mean, let me just show you. Look how nice that fits. Ooh, nice. 
So that's pretty much how I do my socks. I start from the toe. I, I use Judy Magic Cast On, which is a beautiful way to get a closed circular uh, knitting started. And then from there, I increase every row so that way I get my rounded toe that I love so much. And I increase four stitches every row um, on this side. So one here, one here, flip it over, and one here, one here. Or if I'm feeling fancy that day, and if I'm knitting it for myself, then I'll do four stitches, increase every other row, round. Round, it's a round, you're going around in a circle. Okay, and that creates a star shape, but that might not fit everyone's foot. You might, I don't know, it might look a little, a little wonky, because feet aren't really shaped like that, okay? Feet are kind of shaped like that. From the toe, once I reach my increases, I knit all the way, literally all the way up to my heel. And then I start the heel, which is just a method that doesn't have a name, it's not really that well known. Uh, I'm just gonna link that pattern below for that heel because it's pretty good. Uh, it's not the prettiest, but it gets the job done and it fits very well. Um, and if you don't like how that looks, I really love the way the afterthought um, heel looks and the afterthought heel, in case you're wondering, looks just like this. It's literally just a toe. You're just honestly knitting a toe right there and you do it after you uh, bind off your sock so you'll knit it without the heel and you go in and you do sock surgery you cut a hole in your knitting and then you add the heel I have a video on it I'll link it below okay so that is a little much it's faster to knit but there's more finishing time at the end with my socks I like to knit them and be done and mazel tov and I don't even block them. I just throw them in the washer and dryer and then they just look like this. <laughs> they don't look pretty unless you block them, but you know, they're gonna be on your feet. Your feet will block them naturally. But anyway, from the heel, I just knit all the way to the leg and then I do my Elizabeth Zimmerman sewn bind off, which is so easy. Every method I use is gonna be linked below, okay? You can do it. It is honestly the easiest, fastest, coolest way to knit a sock. It is. So great. And then people are always amazed whenever you pull out a sock and just start knitting it and like you're not, and you don't even have like a uh, a pattern. You're just going off the top of your head because it is that simple. Trust me, you can, if I can do it, if I can do it, you can do it, okay? Oh, I have to show you how they look on. <gasps> Let me show you. Ta -da! This is how they look on. Whew. So anyway, that's it for my socks. Um, thank you all for watching, and I will see y'all next week. Happy knitting. Bye.